Take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Last February, my family went down to Orlando area, not my family, like my wife and my kids. I went to be with my extended family because my nephew was getting married and and so the other parts of my family were busy, so I had to go. And uh, my whole family had rented with my siblings. We had rented a condo or a house there in Orlando. But a few days before, actually a few weeks before, the person in my family who had rented this house out was trying to contact the owner, and the owner just wasn't responding to them. And so we got down there, and she was still trying to contact the owner. And the day we were supposed to get in, we we had the address. We had all the information we needed except how to get into the house. Uh, This person did not respond to us, so we didn't know what to do, so we ended up having to book a different house and try to work it out with the the rental agency we were going through. It was kind of a mess. We eventually found a place that worked well for us. But it's interesting because we could not access that house. We knew where it was. We had the address, but we didn't have the code to be able to get in. We're going to see this morning how it is opposite for us as believers. We have access to God through Jesus Christ, but more than that, we have been given God himself to live inside of us, so we have continual access because he is here with us all the time. Roman numeral one we see that believers have been given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us do many things, and one of those is to obey God. And Jesus makes it clear that obedience will be a mark of love. Look what he says here in John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you are it should be a vital part of your life, you should have a desire to obey God. In fact, Jesus continues on if you hop down to verse 21, he says, "Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him." Verse 23. Jesus answered, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the words that you hear are not my words, but the Father's who sent me. Jesus wants to make it absolutely clear that if you truly love God, you will have a desire to obey God. There has been a movement in churches, I would say even probably for the last 50 plus years, and it's very strong in many places even today, where a lot of churches, all they do is talk about the love of God and how much God loves you. And that's so true. God loves you so much more than you can ever comprehend or understand. But Jesus tells us that if we truly love God... In response to his love for us, one of the things we will desire to do is to keep his commandments. There's many people who claim they love God, but choose not to follow his word. There's many people who are believers, but yet don't seek or don't desire or don't have any interest in knowing God's commands or following the commands. You see, if you are a true believer, I believe that you will want to know God's command, you will want to know what he says, and you'll also want to follow them. This week, my wife's family, uh, some of them came from Wisconsin, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and they had five kids. Um, And so they came and they visited for a couple of days, 
And one of the things I wanted to do, I have all types of plans uh, when people come here because there's so many things to do. But I asked them what they wanted to do because I realized that they often like to, people often like to do different things than I do. And because of my love for them, what I wanted to do is, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What are things you want to see? Because I want to do what they want. It's part of the idea of loving somebody. It's not just picking and choosing what you want to do or how you want to live. And when we follow Christ, it's not about what we want. Part of our love or the sign and the show, way we show love is by obeying his commands. But we're going to do this because we've been given the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in those who believe. Look down at verse 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now this is an amazing thing if you think about it. We have the God of the universe who created everything we see around us, who has created the vast galaxy, all that we see, and he is living inside of us. We have the power to overcome sin. We have the power to live in righteousness. We have the peace and comfort of God. Here it's described as the helper is living inside of us. You know, helpers are important. In fact, he goes on further in verse 18 and says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I love this. Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not just going to abandon you and say, here, do it on your, do it on your own. But I'm going to be a helper for you. Now, there's a lot of things that are fairly easy for us to do on our own. But there's other things that are more difficult. One of the things that I have found that I have really enjoyed this last year is all my kids are old enough now that when we go out on the boat, um, what they can do is they can help me get the boat back on the trailer. Now, sometimes it's not a big deal because everything's calm and it's, you know, it's real easy to get on. But there's days, we often go in Crystal Lake on the, uh, the east side of Crystal Lake. And if you, you ever go down to Crystal Lake in Beulah, one thing you'll know, in fact, many years ago, the, la- the name that was first given to Crystal Lake was actually called Wave Lake. They called it Wave Lake when they first noticed it. Why? Because in the daytime, almost all the time, it is wavy, especially near the area of Beulah. And when I'm trying to load the boat on and when the waves are really pushing, it's a little bit harder to do myself. But it's amazing when I have a helper. So what I can do many times is I'll get up and I'll back the trailer in and my, my children can drive the boat onto the trailer. And get this, this year my wife has decided she's going to actually help back the trailer up. So many times she does. Now, there are some humorous times. We kind of laugh at her when she's backing up and swerving, but she's getting a lot better to get in there. Uh, The first time I ever tried to back a boat in uh, years ago, I didn't know anything I was doing. and It would take me like 30 tries to get this thing straight and where where it's going. It's so... And God has given us the Holy Spirit to be our helper. Verse 25, these things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom God will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance of all that I have said to you. He's going to help 
Remember, Jesus had taught them so many things. It's like he crammed everything into them in the three years, and I'm sure they had to be exhausted. Their minds, he had said things over and over. How told him? He's going to bring a helper. Many times, people have asked for computer help. And I'll start telling them how to do something. They're like, wait, 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 wait a minute. i got to get my pencil and paper, and I'm going to write down step by step what I need to do. Why? Because I'm not going to remember that once you're gone. I need a helper to help me. Yesterday, my, my brother came into town, and uh, he was planning to install uh, air conditioner. My brother does heating and cooling, and, and he said he would come and ins- help, I-, I could help him install the air conditioner. I thought, great. Well, he was going to do it a few weeks ago, but something came up, and he and his wife were coming up to celebrate their anniversary. And I wasn't me put or it was, if he was going to do the air conditioner or not because I didn't want. I told him, I said, we don't have to do it now because you're going to be. Spending time with your wife, celebrating your anniversary. But yesterday morning, he, he says, uh, I, I was out exercising. He sends me a text that says, um, I'm ready to go to start installing this. And so we get there, and I got there, and I started doing things. And he's like, okay, this is what you do. And he gives me a list of all the things and points these things out. He says, okay, uh, I'll see you later. I'm going to go spend the day with my wife. Okay. I have to install an air conditioner by myself. I don't know what I'm doing. And he told me some things and other things. Uh, I'm like, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. And I'll, well, I couldn't remember. And I, I spent all day at, trying to work to get it out. And I did okay. He came back in the late afternoon to hook things up, and he had to redo a few things. But over all than already and, and working. But, you know, It was hard when he left because I was kind of on my own. There were a few things I could do, but there's other stuff. I had all types of questions, and I didn't have somebody there. I I like it a lot better when he's there, and, like, he tells me exactly what to do. You know, we have the Holy Spirit lives inside of us who will help remind us of the Word of God and God's truth to help us know what we should do, how we should live. I'm sure you've experienced it before where you've been struggling with something. All of a sudden, God brings a verse, a Bible verse to your mind. A story, a passage brings something there to help you. The Holy Spirit is here to be our helper. What the Holy Spirit also allows us to do is to have peace in the midst of sorrow. Jesus was about to die. He was about to leave them. He knew his disciples were going to experience great sorrow as they watched him die on the cross. But he wanted to prepare him for that. And he let them know that the peace of God is different than the peace of this world. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. He says, I am going to leave you and get with peace, and you are going to have tremendous peace in the middle of this difficult time when I'm going to leave you. Notice what he says, my peace I give to you. Think about the life of Jesus. Do we ever see in Scripture Jesus panicking? He's awakened in the boat. In the boat, there's a big storm around. Does Jesus get up and say, Oh no, there's a storm around. Are we going to? No. He gets up. Calmly, he says, Peace, be still. The disciples come to him in a panic, bringing somebody who's who's, uh, um, demon-possessed. Jesus doesn't say, Oh man, I I forgot. What what do I need to do? I, I don't know. No. Jesus, just the presence of Jesus casts out the demons, basically. And they depart. I mean, Jesus says, I will give you the peace that I have. My peace I give to you. The fact is, is Jesus is calm in everything. He never panics. He never worries. He's never frustrated. And he says, that's the peace that you can have. Not that the world gives. I was thinking about that. What, what is the peace of this world? 
Well, I think the peace that the world gives often involves physical security. Oh, I have money in my bank account. I have this going well for me. That's the peace the world gives. But when those things fall, we don't have peace. Not from the world. But Jesus says, I give my peace unto you, and that peace should calm our hearts. What does he say at the end of verse 27? Let not your hearts be troubled. Remember that phrase? We heard it earlier in chapter 14, 14 verse 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. Or actually, verse 1, really, in verse 14, or chapter 14, he says, Don't let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now, let me ask you Is fear a choice or is fear an emotion? It's both. You probably know by now if I ever ask you a question, normally the answer is both. Um, when, I, when I ask questions. Because it is. Fear is a natural emotion, a natural human spot, response. But fear is also a choice. So naturally, when things happen, we then naturally often become afraid. Here's the question, though. What Do you dwell on it? Do you think about it? Do you let it turn to worry? Do you let it turn to trouble? Or do you cast your cares on him because he cares for you? We're all going to have that initial response many times. Now, sometimes we respond differently than others, but there's that, that tinge of fear. But what do we do with it? Do we dwell on it? Or do we choose to not let our hearts be troubled? We, are, we, we do. We have a choice. Now, some of us naturally worry more than others. 